friends. It's Carla, your online doctor with today's Live in 5. Today is Thursday, January 7th, and it is 5 p.m. <clears throat> so, I've been asked this question often lately. If we take antibiotics for bacterial infections, why don't we routinely take antivirals for things like the flu? Okay, or maybe for COVID as an example. Antibiotics have definitely saved millions of lives since their discovery in 1928 when penicillin was discovered. <clears throat> since the first half of the 20th century, the most common cause of death has shifted from communicable diseases, which were smallpox, typhoid fever, plague, and tuberculosis, to non-communicable diseases, including heart attacks, stroke, diabetes, and cancer. Major, major shift. But what about diseases caused by viruses? Aside from the current COVID-19 pandemic, we deal with plenty of other viruses. We deal with HIV, influenza, and the common cold. Okay, just to name a few. We do have a series of drugs called antivirals. So why don't we use them as often as we use antibiotics? Now, some feel it is hard to kill that which is already dead. Let me explain. Bacteria are alive. They eat, they can reproduce through the exchange of genetic material, and they exhibit most other signs or qualities of a living organism. Viruses, on the other hand, can only reproduce by hijacking the cell machinery of the host cells that they infect. They can't reproduce on their own. They are basically inert if left to sit on their own. They don't move, they don't show metabolic activity, and they can't, can't make more of themselves without being inside a host cell. <clears throat> Unfortunately, all of this makes them harder to kill. Antibiotics work by attacking the cell wall <clears throat> of the bacteria or interfering with their metabolism, blocking vital processes needed for reproduction. <clears throat> Either way, the bacteria dies. But viruses don't have a cell wall, only a protein coat that surrounds their genetic material. And they don't have metabolic processes to interrupt since the cells they invade do all of that for the virus. So we need more targeted approaches to kill a virus. We also can't use the same method on every virus since they are all different and they work differently. So each virus, in essence, has to have its own specific treatment. So how do we kill viruses? Viruses go through a set of stages um, when they infect a host cell. So for example, the virus attaches to the host cell, the virus releases its genetic material, DNA or RNA into the host cell, the virus makes more copies of itself using the host cell machinery. These copies assemble into a new virus or multiple um, viruses and the new viruses are released either by the host cell rupturing to, or some mechanism where the virus is then um, put out into your blood or into your body for them to infect other cells. So disrupting one or more of these stages can stop the virus from spreading. So we can build specific proteins that bind to the virus shell so it can't physically attach to a host cell. We can interfere with the binding of the virus to the host cell at their receptor sites. We can block the virus shell from opening after it attaches to a host cell. We can block the activation of the genetic material inside the virus so it can't make more viruses. And the list goes on and on. But there are a few what we call broad spectrum antivirals that work on many different viruses. Most work on DNA viruses too not RNA viruses like COVID-19. So when is it good to take an antiviral medication? Because there are some out there and there are some actually being used in the treatment of COVID. Number one, if there is a dangerous or deadly viral disease, like check COVID, right? There are many of these out there and sometimes antivirals are indicated for that type of situation. And number two, if you're in a population at high risk for, of death or lasting injury from 
a viral infection, such as the elderly or immunocompromised. So antivirals don't cure you though, okay? They only lessen the time that you are sick, but only if taken right after getting infected, ideally within the first 24 to 48 hours. Now that's not the same with bacterial infections because you can start an antibiotic at any point. Obviously, earlier on in the infection, the, the faster you're going to get better, but in, with viruses, if you wait till day three or day four, it's probably gonna have no effect, if, if any at all, like very little. So again, why don't we take antivirals the same as antibiotics? Number one, we need specific antivirals, not broad spectrum, so you'd need to test which virus you actually have, so you know what you're treating. Number two, it's not a cure. Unlike bacterial infections, it may only lower your viral load and help your body fight off the virus faster. And number three, you need to prevent resistance to viruses for vulnerable populations. So if we treat, I mean, we have antibiotic resistance because we overuse antibiotics. So if we start to do the same with antivirals, we are going to end up with the same problem. So just a little bit about viruses and antivirals. Um, any questions or any comments, put them below. Talk to your doctor. See if, you, uh, if you've ever taken, I mean, I know I've taken Tamiflu when I got the flu. And um, again, you take it early enough, it's going to work. Um, but for this, do we take them in advance? Can we take them prophylactically? All kinds of questions out there still going unanswered. On that note, I hope you are having a wonderful day, staying positive, doing all the things we talked about the other day. I will see you again next Tuesday for another Live in Five.